thank you so much everyone for making the um, information session today for the Research Impact Canada Engage Scholarship Award. We are so excited to have you join us today. Um, and in this information session, we've had the privilege of having three of our award recipients from um, 2022 to share their wisdom, their experience, expertise with you on their experience with the award. And so if you have any questions or anything like that, feel free to pop it in the chat box. So today's information session to give you a brief idea of how is it gonna go. Um, we'll start off with um, um, the experience of the four award recipients. So Christine will first share her experience, it's followed by Hannah, then Meiji, and then Claire. And then we'll open up the floor for questions. So feel free to either unmute yourself in order to share this information, or um, if you would like, feel free to also type it in the chat box. And we'll be happy to um, direct your questions ID to one or all of the um, individuals. And before we start the session, we'd like to um, have a land of acknowledgement because as we are not all gathered in the same place, we recognize that this land acknowledgement might not be for the territory that you're currently on. We ask that if that this is the case, you take the responsibility to acknowledge the traditional territory you are on and the current treaty holders. We recognize that many indigenous nations have long-standing relationships with the territories upon which York University campuses are located that precede the establishment of York University. York University acknowledges its presence on the traditional territory of many indigenous nations. The area known as Toronto has been caretaken by the Anishinaabeg Nation, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, the Huron-Renda, and the Métis. It is now home to many indigenous people. We acknowledge the current treaty holders, the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nations. This territory is subject of the District One Spoon Wapam Belt Covenant, an uh, agreement to peacefully share and care for the Great Lakes regions. So without um, further ado, I will pass um, things on to Christine, who was first share with us her experience and how she felt about the application process. And if you have any questions afterwards, um, feel free to let us know. I will be dropping in the chat box also um, an email that you could email along. Um, thank you. Thank you. Um, so the application actually came through uh, to me through email from my PhD committee. Um, and I felt very overwhelmed at the time and like I really wasn't um, up for applying for something that I thought I wouldn't possibly receive. Um, but once I looked at the application process itself, I realized that it was pretty straightforward. Um, and my committee really, really promoted um, and pushed me to apply for the funding um, or for the award. Um, and like I said, I honestly didn't believe that I had a chance of, of getting the award. And um, my research was a photo voice project with two SLGBTQ plus populations. Um, and I, I ended up applying because there were a lot of costs coming up associated with my research and very little or no funding from my department available. Um, and so I went through the application process. It was it was a fairly quick application and um, my committee wrote, wrote some um, recommendations as well. Um, and then when I found out I received the award, um, I was really shocked and also relieved because that meant that I would be able to go on with the community um, aspects of the research project. So um, we had planned on hosting art shows, for example, and printing pictures in large is a is very expensive. Um, so I was able to sort of finish all of the parts of the community facing stuff that I wanted to do, which was absolutely amazing. Um, and the award came with um, a lot of opportunities for speaking. Um, and, and I really appreciated that because it helped me think of my research in, in different ways and from different perspectives. 
and allowed me to be able to network with a lot of other people who do similar types of research to me, which um, I hadn't been able to find prior to receiving this award and all of the benefits that came with it. That's it for me for now. Thank you so much, Christine, for sharing your experience at the award and how you found out about it and what you were able to do with um, and how you felt the experience afterward. This is really helpful, Christine. And so now um, Hannah will be able to share her experience of the Rick and Gage Scholarship Award, including how she felt about the application process. Thank you. Thank you so much, Elizabeth. Um, yeah, I came across uh, the RIP Award um, also kind of uh, quite frankly in my research um, for really just funding opportunities uh, generally. Um, I think anyone in the research is well aware of, of the cost involved and um, at, at least at the master's level, um, there's, there's limited, uh, often limited financial support, which is the case for me. Um, but what I really liked about it and what drew me to it um, above all was that it was more than just, I guess, um, a financial aid or a, a financial um, asset necessarily, but it was also it also extended to the opportunity to more widely disseminate the knowledge associated with my research. Um, and for me, I felt that was very important because that was something um, I was kind of seeking very actively to do at the time, um, since my research was in um, what I felt was a relatively novel area that needed more attention, um, which was specifically. Um, integration of water sanitation, I'm uh, sorry, climate adaptation into the water sanitation hygiene sector. Um, and so because this is a kind of a new and forthcoming issue um, that many practitioners are, are giving consideration to and that researchers are just starting to look into, um, I really wanted to find ways to, to better ensure that the knowledge could be um, uh, could be uh, could reach the, the target users of this knowledge, um, which would largely be the NGO sector as well as um, stakeholders and practitioners working in the field, um, and then policymakers, of course, as well. Um, I really appreciated that RIC provided the opportunity to actually um, have like a spotlight session, which was an online event where we could actually feature our research findings to a broader Canadian audience. Um, and all of those benefits at the end of the day really outweighed any aspect of it beyond just the financial um, contribution it made to my research um, because I was able to engage with a broader audience. Um, and then um, beyond that, just building off of what the prior speaker said, um, really being able to reflect upon um, kind of what, what I learned through my experiences and what this contributes more broadly to the field helped me to kind of deepen the analysis of my own research, um, appreciate it more um, in a way that went beyond just the academic perspective. Um, so actually, Liz, I think that, um, uh, okay, I, I apologize if I haven't been super clear. Um, I was about to just kind of wrap up what I was saying. Um, that was kind of the extent of it. Uh, if someone wants to uh, specifically ask me to elaborate on something that they didn't hear very well, I think it's more of the pronunciation and like it's kind of scritchy. So it was the actual that was the part that was difficult to, difficult to hear you. So like the sound is not there. Oh, I see. Okay. Um, uh, let me try something else. Uh, is it any better? So much. Yes, better. much better. Oh, I'm so sorry about that. Okay, you know what? It must have been my earphones. Um, I'm just in a library. Um, okay, I'm just gonna step aside. Um, sorry, I can repeat what I said if all of it was kind of blurred. Um, basically, um, I was saying that I came across the award um, through uh, also my search for, for financial uh, support for my research because that was something that um, uh, most of you will will come to realize is is very needed and um, something you don't get a lot of support with at the master's level. 
Um, but I was saying that what attracted me to the award um, more than the financial uh, benefit or support that it provided um, was actually the fact that it gave an opportunity to uh, more broadly disseminate my knowledge, um, the knowledge that was produced as a result of my research. Um, and that was something that I was really seeking actively to do at the time, um, specifically because my area of research was something that I felt um, was relatively novel and really needed to get get a little bit more attention. Um, it was specifically looking at the integration of climate adaptation into the water sanitation and hygiene sector. Um, and so because this is kind of a novel area of interest that's only just gaining traction within the international NGO uh, sector, um, I felt that uh, the knowledge uh, produced through my research um, was something that would be important to, to ensure um, that it was something that was important for me to ensure reached the the, the target users of this knowledge. Um, and so I really appreciated that that was kind of offered as a channel beyond just the conventional aspects of this award, which which were obviously um, included financial support. Um, and uh, it was really great to have the opportunity to to feature that knowledge in the form of the spotlight event that they hosted. Um, they also provided uh, some uh, access to um, knowledge mobilization uh, conferences where I could further share my research. Um, and then just in the process of sharing to, to new audiences, it helped me to reflect more deeply on kind of what are the contributions of my research to the field um, and kind of what are the next steps to guide uh, research, other researchers that want to work in this specific realm. Um, so overall, my experience was, was really wonderful and it went well beyond the typical award experience in terms of the, the engagement that I was able to have with new audiences um, and just the, the personal uh, process that it spurred um, of, of reflecting upon um, the outcomes of my research and my experiences um, in, in conducting and uh, completing this project. Um, sorry if that was repetitive because I said it twice, but it sounds like most of you didn't really hear the first time. Um, and so again, I apologize for, for taking up more time as a result of having to say it twice. Um, but anyways, thank you so much for this uh, opportunity and, and I'll, I'll hand it over to the next speaker. Thanks so much, Hannah, and thank you so much for um, being so kind and willing to um, repeat. Really appreciate um, you sharing that experience. And the next speaker will be Majid. Thank you. Uh, so hi, everyone. Um, hope you can hear me OK as well. I uh, I want to echo the same sentiments as uh, the previous speakers. I uh, also uh, garnered a lot of opportunity from applying for this uh, scholarship award. and. Uh, just being able to actually go to the conference and network with people in a multidisciplinary setting, people especially who um, I didn't normally encounter in my purview. Um, that was really, that was a really welcoming experience. Um, so uh, I, I, I'm not sure if the same conferences are part of this award this year, but last year it was uh, the Research Administrators Conference and the um, uh, Knowledge Mobilization Forums. Uh, that were part, kind of part of the experience. And uh, yeah, so I, I, I think that this award kind of brings a, a, a lot of uh, opportunity in that sense. And it also helps you to kind of um, exercise a little bit of a, a, a summary and a reflection of what you did in terms of your engaged scholarship work and kind of the impact that that work may have had uh, in terms of your partnership and relationships, but also um, for yourself and in, in terms of your own development. And so uh, uh, in, in terms of what I want to share today, I'll, I'll speak a little bit more practically of, of kind of how um, I underwent the process and kind of the key things I, I took into account when uh, actually preparing the application. Um, so I was brought this uh, application to my attention from uh, some advisors that I worked on on a knowledge translation project. And um, so uh, the one advisor really helped me and she was actually affiliated with like kind of the Knowledge Translation Institute at the University of Ottawa. Um, and I would implore all of you if if there are um, a similar institute that your own um, university or college or institution that you uh, reach out to them uh, with regard to this process, they might have somebody who's affiliated with 
um, Research Impact Canada for this award who can actually help you with your application. Uh, and so I benefited from that in um, my own application and being able to receive some feedback of, of the writing that I, I did. But some of the main things that I um, took into account was being able to speak to an audience broader than your area of research. So it's really important to not speak in jargon, uh, providing key terms and definitions for every kind of um, term that you introduce in your in your cover letter, um, uh, trying to avoid acronyms, trying to help to tell a story rather than trying to write an article about yourself or about your work. Um, <clears throat> and really make it personal talk a little bit about what brought you to your engage your engaged scholarship work at least that's what worked for me um and what uh kind of prepared me in embarking on this journey so i really spoke to some of the pieces about um the training and education and experiences that i garnered to actually be able to prepare me in embarking on my work but also continue my ongoing learning about how to uh, engage in meaningful partnership meaningful community uh, research. Um, and then I spoke to my project, um, uh, especially with regards to the novelty and need for this kind of work um, and the potential impact that my work uh, could have um, on, on communities, systems, people. Um, and then, of course, speaking to what I did, what happened, what I found, and kind of the impact of what, 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 that, um, what, what this work um, resulted in. And then finally, I kind of wrapped it up with my lessons learned. Uh, so like, what are the key pieces that I took away from uh, actually engaging in this work that um, not only benefited others in the community that, well, well, that I worked with, but also for my personal development and how this project helped to shape some of my future endeavors and future potential journeys that I was gonna take on. Um, so that's what I did. Uh, I, I it is I, I imagine only a two page letter the same way as last time. So it is a lot of considerations to fit in. So uh, I, I would really um, uh, not take to heart that I'm providing a prescription, but rather just telling you what I did. And you might have different considerations that are important for crafting your letter. Um, uh, but I, I hope that kind of uh, what I provided is maybe helpful and provides a little bit of reflection of what you would want to do to tell your own story of your uh, engaged scholarship work. So I think I'll end there for now. Perfect. Thank you so much for providing these practical tips. Um, really helpful. Thank you, Mavis. And then um, we will like to welcome our wonderful um, Claire, who um, is one of the uh, master's award recipients for um, the award. Awesome, yeah. Uh, so I will try not to uh, say the same things that everybody else has already said, but I would like to echo a lot of the same sentiment. Um, I think I found the uh, application for the RIC award um, on Twitter, actually. And well, it's always nice to get extra money as a grad student. There's not a lot of it going around. Um, the thing that I was most excited about uh, with the award and the application was that it really celebrates um, community-centered work and uh, being able to focus on um, the kind of practical application of research and the people uh, who are going to be using it, so the community impact. And that's not something that a lot of places in academia really focus on or celebrate. Uh, so I thought it was a really exciting kind of opportunity to uh, be able to kind of meet some other people who are engaged in the same type of work and who are also excited about that impact, um, but also a chance to, um, to highlight some of the really cool work that I'm doing in partnership with, uh, with my community partners. So I am in environmental science, I do wildlife monitoring, but I specifically work in partnership with a First Nation community, Magnetowan First Nation, and everything we do is very collaborative. So this award was kind of a really awesome opportunity to highlight all of the different ways that we work together in the research and how that translates not just in academia and kind of the research application, but how that can kind of translate on the ground. Um, so with the application itself, it was kind of a fun way to just like think about all of the different things that I've been doing and learning. Um, I applied about the halfway point, so I'm still finishing up now. So the research is still ongoing, but it was a nice chance to just 
think about all of the things that I'm doing, how I engage with community partners, and the kind of hopeful application and outcomes that we had, um, and to be able to think about those myself, and also to be able to connect with community partners and kind of touch base and see, uh, see where we were at and where we were hoping to go. One thing that I will make note of is that you do need a letter of support from community partners as well as your supervisor, especially because community partners, depending on who you're working with, um, aren't necessarily as used to writing letters of recommendation or applications or whatever for awards as like your supervisor or people in academia. I would definitely recommend giving them more advanced notice and offering uh, to provide support in that. So especially working with a uh, First Nation partner, it's, it's really important for us to make sure that we're not jumping on too much additional work um, and asking too much of people. So I was able to kind of go through um, the, the letter writing process with somebody from, uh, from the community and we were able to figure out what that letter should say and do that together because I didn't wanna just say, hey, can you write me a letter um, and then have that extra work for them. But I also wanted to, uh, to make it a good opportunity for us to kind of reflect on the process and the project and where we could move forward together. Um, yeah, otherwise I would say really great opportunities with the award um, and just to really just to, to take the time to reflect on your own work and the process and to enjoy writing the application process because you probably won't have uh, many other applications that are as fun and nice and kind of easy to write. Uh, a lot of the other ones are much more structured and less fun. Um, but yeah, so that's that's what I've got to say for now, I think. Thank you so much, Claire. Thank you so much to all four of you, um, Meji, Christine, Hannah, and Claire, for providing your insights um, and reflections on your experience with the award. Really appreciate all four of you so much for making the time today. Um, and so without further ado, um, I'm opening the floor up to questions. So if you have any questions, um, whether it's to one of our um, wonderful um, award recipients or um, all four of them, feel free to post it into the chat box or feel free to unmute yourself. Um, and please make um, good use of this time because um, these four award recipients have done incredible work. Their application really stood out from all of the ones we received. And so this is a really, truly amazing opportunity to strengthen your um, application before the deadline in February. And yeah, they're here. They're here to support you. So um, make good use of that time to ask them questions. Um, so the first question, um, Oh, a comment um, from Devorah Silverman is that she has a similar project, um, Claire. I have a similar project, Claire, and I worry about additional labor with Indigenous partner I am working with. So the question is for Claire um, from Devorah. Feel free to let me know if I'm pronouncing your name correctly. Sorry if I um, got, um, if I'm mispronouncing, feel free to correct me. Um, she um, worries about additional labor with Indigenous partner that she's working with. Would you be able to provide more insight on that, Claire, and how you could, how to support um, the Indigenous partner that um, she's working with at the moment? Thank you. Uh, yeah, definitely. I can, I can try. Um, I would say a lot of it kind of depends on the specifics. You'll obviously know your partnership best and you'll know, um, hopefully, you know, kind of within that partnership, if there's a point person that might be the best person to, um, that either works the closest with you or that often does like grants or applications or things like that. Um, I can just kind of provide some general things I found helpful or that I did. Um, and then feel free to touch base with me if you want to chat more specifically later. Um, but uh, something that I found helpful was I went through all of the requirements on the application and what was needed out of that letter. And I kind of compiled a list of, um, of kind of the key points. And then I even put some suggestions and I just said, like, here are some different things that I think. Feel free to change them, add to them, take them out. Whatever, uh, whatever you see fit, because obviously it's coming from 
from someone else, not from me. So I don't want to be the one writing it, but I was wanting to really provide as much support as I could so that it could be a matter of just kind of writing it in sentences and signing it off. Um, if you know that your partners are really busy, you could potentially like write the letter more structured yourself, like in sentences and just send it to them and allow them to make any changes before they sign off on it. Um, it really depends on how busy partners are. I know it is a big, a big consideration because of course we wanna make sure that um, our partnership is benefiting both sides, right? Like research and community. Um, and so we wanna make sure that we're not putting extra burden, but at the same time, like at least in my case, our community partners were really excited to see this application succeed. They were really excited that I got it. And it was a really cool opportunity to um, kind of uplift and provide a platform in some different ways and in some different spaces to show some of the great work that we're doing together and also just that the community is doing even without me, uh, which was pretty cool. So there definitely are a lot of benefits. Um, there's not one way to go about doing it. Um, but yeah, if they're really busy, I would say provide as much support as you can, write a letter template and see if uh, if you can kind of meet up and go through it or just get them to provide feedback and you can go from there, yeah. Perfect, thank you so much, Claire. That was an excellent response. Um, and I could see that um, Devara also mentioned that it was really helpful. So thank you so much. I've also received um, direct messages from two individuals whereby um, um, the questions were the same, um, or one of the two questions from one of the individuals was the same as the other question, um, which is how many awards are being awarded for this um, round? So last year, there were two master's um, award and two PhD awards. So um, our award recipient for the PhD um, award for the Rick Engage Scholarship Award was Christy and Meji, and our master's um, award recipient were Fair and Hannah. This year, um, we're hoping we're at least awarding two master's and two PhD award, uh, award for the Rick Engage Scholarship Award, but we're hoping to add one more for each of them. So we're hoping three um, master's and three PhD um, award recipients for this year. And then a second question that we received was, can we apply if we're planning a community engaged project for this um, summer? So active or completed studies are eligible to apply for the Rick Engaged Scholarship Award. If you have any other questions, feel free to add it to the chat box and um, we'll be happy to address them. Or yeah, feel free to be to in the chat me. box. Okay. Oh yeah. Is oh, it okay perfect. if I jump in? Yeah, definitely. And pronouns are they, them, yell. And my question is a bit particular because I did apply last year and I agree with everybody who mentioned like it's very user friendly, like the application's nice and short and sweet. And like it really makes you highlight what the importance and like really highlighting that community aspect. So the the issue I'm having is being able to condense my project to the point that it fits in that area because my project stems from the community itself. And the community came towards a group of researchers to do a needs assessment to determine what the needs were for the community to then do the subsequent research. So I was lucky enough that they allowed me to take on part of the bigger research project as my doctoral research. So I'm not sure how to present this for this award because the whole award is based in community-based participatory research. My particular aspect, even though it, was, it came out of the fruit of the community-based participatory research, we recognize that the community didn't have the energy to be as implicated in this part of the award. And so they wanted to look at it a different way. The end game is the same because in the end, the data and what comes out of it 
and the knowledge translation will be with and by the community. So I guess my issue is, how do you explain this situation in a way that works by recognizing that community engagement that has already happened prior to the actual research I'm doing at the doctoral level, if that makes any sense. So I know that can go in the letter, but like it feels like it's it, everything I'm doing lines up with this, but I don't know how to condense it enough because it's such a large project. And if you don't have the whole picture of the large project, it's harder to see how my individual piece of the big picture fits, if that makes any sense. So I guess it's just more like more of a brainstorming, like any tips and tricks on being able to highlight this with the limited amounts of words to like bring that stuff to the foreground. Um, I, I can jump in on that question. I think it's a really, um, a really thought provoking question and I, and I love it. Um, it, it I, I don't necessarily have tips about trimming down something. I, I do more think about um, potentially looking at a framework or a model of kind of the key domains that you want to be able to highlight in your engaged scholarship application. So um, I, I think it's posted on the Research Impact Canada website. I and I think I refer to these um, domains of engaged scholarship. Uh, I think well, one of them was like high quality scholarship, recipro reciprocity, and identifying community needs, boundary crossing. And I, what I did personally was I made sure that no matter how much information I'm providing, I'm at least covering a few of these key domains and explaining how I'm covering those domains or, or how my, my story and my partnership engaged in these domains. So how my, um, our partnership engaged in high quality scholarship, how our partnership engaged in boundary crossing. Um, and so that's my advice. I, I, I don't think you need to provide a full picture. You just necessarily need to provide the picture of how your partnership is an example of high quality engaged scholarship. Um, and I, I use those principles. You might use something else, but maybe maybe that's a starting point that I would suggest. Oh, that makes a lot of sense. That's a that it like keeps me on point as well. Right. Because the research project that I'm currently on has like five different phases, right? And I'm doing one of the five phases, but I've been in the research project from the beginning. And a lot of the community engagement piece happened at the very beginning. And like parts of it continue that and some parts don't as much and mine doesn't as much because the community engagement will happen afterwards. So, so taking those domains and like keeping it to that, that's a really good suggestion. Yeah, and I, I'd like to share a similar um, experience as my work was with uh, uh, BGC Canada. They used to be known as the Boys and Girls Clubs of Canada. And they, um, we were engaged in the development and evaluation of a project. But most of what I spoke to in terms of our story and most of the community building and relationship building happened before we did any form of research. Um, and I think that's okay. I don't think necessarily that you have to speak to the research aspect particularly um, if your engaged scholarship involves that level of relationship building I, I i think that's okay to speak to um the fact that those things happen separately but it, it is still your process as a researcher that you were involved there as a researcher with some form of expertise uh, uh, that you brought to the table uh in that partnership in that research partnership, regardless of whether you actually started the study or, or when you started the study. I think all of those aspects play a part in the research process, regardless of when the actual design started. Awesome, thanks. Perfect. And I also think I saw Christine um, earlier um, raising her hand. Um, would you like to add anything else as well, Christine? Um, yeah, I just wanted to add that my research also came from the community. I worked with a like grassroots group of community members. Um, and um, in my research, um, participants became participant researchers. So they actually became the researchers themselves and collected the data themselves. 
Um, so I sort of just briefly mentioned in my applications that outline, like that community engaged, like really embedded in community part. But I I put a lot of emphasis and focus on the knowledge mobilization aspects at a community level, um, because I mean, a part of why we do this kind of research is to impact communities and not have research that just sits in, you know, the ivory tower. So um, I spent a lot more time emphasizing what what we were hoping to do with the research or planning to do with the research um, findings and the themes that emerged. And I think that was really helpful. Um, and it is, I, I recognize that it's a very small amount of space, but the people also reading your applications understand community-based work and, and community-engaged scholarships. So um, you don't have to get into the nuances of what those are. So it is a little bit, it is a little bit helpful to know that, you know, the folks reading the applications are, they are, they specialize in this field. So um, they sort of already know the groundwork. No, that makes a lot of sense. And a lot of the knowledge mobilization piece is actually going to happen after the doctoral studies are done. Yes. Right? Mine did so, well. Yeah. So that's where it's like, well, this is like a four year doctorate. And then there's the two years of advocacy and community mobilizations that come afterwards and then a change in the healthcare system, hopefully, eventually. But yeah, that's awesome. Thanks, guys. Sorry for taking all the time. Thank you for being understanding. Thanks so much, Meiji and Christine. Really helpful responses. And um, also Hannah has a tip um, for you as well in the chat box. Um, Hannah mentioned if perhaps you could provide a embedded link to more information on the larger project as well. Thanks, Hannah. Great. Is there any other questions that anyone has? Feel free to unmute yourself or put it in the chat box. This is a great opportunity to address any questions that you have, because as mentioned, these were our top four um, selected individuals to receive the Rick and Gage Scholarship Award. Um, there were a lot of applications last year, but their application really stood out from everyone else. So um, any tips of advice you're looking for specifically, feel free to post it in the chat box or unmute yourself. Oh, perfect. We received another um, question from Devorah Silverman. Um, Devorah was mentioned, was wondering if you may speak to the community campuses position conference. Did the recipients go to speak last year? Was it fully covered? Um, so last year, instead of the community campuses position conference, um, the um, the conference that was covered was another conference. Um, I, it just flips my mind right now, but I remember Mishi, you attended. Um, and so they didn't specifically speak at last year's conference, but there are opportunities where you could, um, there are speaking opportunities. For instance, there was like more of like a webinar session where um, each of the individuals um, who were able to make it um, was able to share a little bit more about their award-winning project. And the conference that, um, oh yes, now I remember, last year was the CARA conference, um, which stands for, um, let me see, because I don't want to make it up either. Um, the Canadian Association of Research Administrators um, was the conference that was covered um, in terms of if um, the admission fee was covered for them to attend if they wish to do so either virtually or in person. Um, but this year for the community campuses position conference, yes, if you are a, a war recipient, um, we will cover the cost of your um, attendance. Um, Mashi, um, did you want to speak a little bit about your experience um, in regards to the um, Canadian Association of Research Administrators um, um, conference last year? Yeah, so um, it, it happened in Ottawa. So luckily, it was it was very close by, and um, uh, the the whole registration fees and everything was covered by uh, the award. 
Um, I, again, I spoke to uh, it briefly, but just um, that was one of my exposures to kind of multidisciplinary um, perspectives in research administration and some of the conversations that they might be having about knowledge mobilization, knowledge translation at their level. And I, I, I was able to gain a lot more insight of just kind of the key workings behind this, this academic system that we're all in and what research institutions are um, uh, dealing with on database day, month to month basis on and, and kind of getting to hear those perspectives that I normally wouldn't have been exposed to otherwise. I think um, uh, as students, we often um, are, are see our administrations kind of as like a black box of, of things that are happening. And then uh, uh, like we ask for something, it goes through a bunch of different loops and then it comes back to us kind of thing. And so getting to understand a little bit about those inner workings and, and understanding kind of their their experiences and their priorities that they're trying to tackle and some of the systems change that they're trying to make in terms of creating more space for knowledge mobilization, creating more space for um, uh, diverse approaches to research inquiry um I, I think and also the conversations about equity diversity and inclusion that were happening at the at the higher levels and kind of the changes that they're attempting to make was really um uh, yeah it was a good experience to be exposed to that perfect thank you so much Meiji. this is great um if there's no more questions, then I'm happy to share um, an email um, for Research Impact Canada Engage Scholarship Award. If you have any questions, feel free to email them at info at researchimpact.ca and we'll be happy to um, redirect it to the right person or um, answer it as well. Um, Thank you so much for attending today. Um, again, the session is recorded. So if you have a colleague or a friend who wanted to attend today's session, but was unable to make it, um, feel free to forward them this um, recording. And thank you so much for attending today's session. We look forward to receiving your application and yes, and continue the wonderful knowledge mobilization work that you do um, in your community. Thank you.